Networks. Networks in Ethereum are different environments that you can access for development, testing or production purposes. Ethereum accounts, like our address on our MetaMask wallet, can work across these networks. But account balance and transaction history do not transfer between the networks. Blockchain networks can be private or public. What we need to worry about are the two main public networks, the main network and the test networks. The mainnet is the primary public Ethereum blockchain for actual value transactions. ETH prices are in reference to mainnet ETH. This is also, in developer terms, the production environment. Testnets are public networks for protocol and smart contract developers to test upgrades and potential contracts in a production-like environment before deploying it to the mainnet. To deploy smart contracts and test on the test network, we need some test net ETH, and this we can get from something called a faucet. We will see how to get some test ETH on a test network later on. Two public test nets maintained by client developers are the Sapolia network and the Gurley network. Currently, Gurley is being deprecated and it will be replaced by Holshevicha. But that doesn't really matter because the process of adding and using a test network stays the same. For now, we can still use Gurley because we can easily get some test ether with Gurley. And later when Holshevicha comes out, we can simply add that network and get some ether. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add the Gurley network and we might as well add the Sapolia as well on MetaMask. To add another network to MetaMask, we can open our extension. And here we go. We can see that currently we are on the Ethereum mainnet. And here's our Ether associated with the main network. To add another network, we can click on this drop down and click on Add Network. This will take us to MetaMask settings. And in here, we get some predefined networks that MetaMask sees as popular, I guess. And we can add them. Or we can add a network manually. Now, if you choose this step, make sure that the RPC URL that you are going to put in here is a trusted RPC URL. But to add a network, you need a network name, an RPC URL, which is the access to that network, the chain ID that it lives on, a currency symbol that's going to be displayed by MetaMask, and a blockchain explorer. Now, this we can do and we can find the details on what is the best girly RPC to use and so on. However, MetaMask knows about Ethereum. So if we go to the Networks tab, here we can see Ethereum mainnet is here. And this is the details that MetaMask uses. MetaMask uses its own RPC. You can see this is an Infura RPC link to get access uh, you know, and communicate with the node and the Ethereum network. So we can also see that the Gurley test network is already here. And this is its details. And we can also see the Sapolia network is here. And here is its details. Now in the previous video, we discussed the RPC URL. So now you can actually see some examples of these URLs. Also, I want to mention that networks can also be private. And this is what this local network is really for. It's when you want to do private development on your local machine, which I'll show you in the course. For now, we want to make sure that we can actually see the Gurley test network when we click on this drop down. So here is a button that says show high test networks. And if we click on this, this will take us to the advanced settings. And we can scroll down on MetaMask and click on show test networks. Once we click this on and we go back to the top, now we can see the test networks as well. You can rename these networks to make more sense for you, but leaving them default is explanatory enough. Also note that when Holshevicha finally comes out, you can simply go to your networks and click on add network and then manually add it over here if MetaMask doesn't support it automatically. Okay, that's enough about networks. So now whenever we are on a website and we go to our MetaMask extension, we can easily switch between the networks. And I want you to notice something. 
the account public address stays exactly the same. So if we switch to Sapolia, it's the same account. To the Gurley, it's the same account. The ETH, Gurley ETH, here is zero. But I will only see my ETH balance in this account when I'm on the correct network. So here on the main network, this is my actual balance. But I don't have some Gurley test ether yet. Let's go ahead and get some test ether. Currently we are on ethereum.org, which is a great developer's resource, which I'll talk about later. But for now, I just want to talk about faucets. Getting test ether is extremely difficult sometimes. Like with the Sapolia network currently, if I go to the suggested faucets, and I click on one, I should see that it's not working. Now, sometimes there might be different reasons why, and if I go to another one, the conditions are that addresses had to be deployed before a certain date to be eligible, but we can get some girly ether. If we go to girly, now faucets can also run dry, and they all have their own rules for getting some ether to you. Because remember, it is free test ether. It's not valuable, but at the end of the day, without it, you cannot test on the network. So, let's try this all that node, girly faucet. So now that we're on a faucet website and they all look different, this one looks very decent, we can go and select what network we want some test ether for. I'm surprised to see that the Sapodia testnet is here as well. Maybe we should try and get some of this ether also. But let's start off with Gurley, so we're going to select that and grab our address. Copy it, paste it in here, say that we are not a robot, and then I'm going to request some test Gurley Ether. Now this worked, and as we can see, here's the transaction, and I want to show you something interesting with this transaction. You know that I've shown you Etherscan before. Now this is Etherscan. But as you can see in the URL, this is pointing to the Gurley network. Etherscan without this is pointing to the main network. And of course it won't find this transaction, so this is the main network. But just so that you know that a network has a different blockchain explorer altogether. Pretty cool and pretty useful for development. Okay. So it says that we got the token, so let's verify in our wallet. We can open this up, and indeed we now have 0.025 Gurley Ether. Now this might not be enough for deploying a smart contract on the test network. We will see. For now, if you can't get test Ether like this, don't worry, because most of our development will most probably take place on a local host, or on Remix's JavaScript VM. And Remix provides for us its own test ether anyway. But it's a good thing to start collecting some test ether from faucets whenever you can. Because if you want to try it out in a production-like environment, your contract, it's very good. The other takeaway that I want you to take from this video is that different networks for your account will have different balances because there's a clear distinction on test ether and mainnet ether. This one on the mainnet actually has the value. But both these networks work the same and we can deploy contracts to them. And lastly, because networks are their own environments, blockchain explorers like Etherscan can support different test networks as well. Currently we are on Etherscan and this is the main network of Ethereum. It has value. And if we go to something like the Sapolia, we can do it by going to this URL. Etherscan has a reference to what's happening on the Sapolia network when it comes to testing. The same with the Gurley test network. So just know that these networks are different and we can be on a different network at any given time.